Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and this one is of course the last March of the Tomb Kings specific as was promised all throughout the month of March we're doing some Tomb Kings focused models as part of our hobby cheating and if you read the title you know what this one's about and it is about edge highlighting so today we're going to talk about edge highlighting now the first thing I want to say about edge highlighting is it's an extremely useful technique, but it's not something that you have to do or employ on every model. But on the models where you use it, it can really make certain things pop. Uh, the most common application, I think, for it in general is probably in 40K uh, or a game like Infinity, it's something futuristic where you have big armor plates, right? And so it's sort of a way to make them stand out. Now. That being said, there's still plenty of good chances all throughout our fantasy models as well to do some edge highlighting. So, um, what I've got here is a mostly finished uh, snake surfer. That is to say, he's, he's, you know, there's still a little cleanup to do, but I've done all the base painting and highlighting. And that right there tells you the first thing about edge highlighting is it's usually one of the last steps you want to do. Now, if we look at this guy, you can see right along here where there's some gold where it shouldn't be down here along the bottom of his thing, you know, the bottom of his hood, I guess. And you can see that this transitions into to a brighter color from up under his hood. You can see the same thing here on the top of his crest, right? But we don't have any sharpness. Same with kind of the edge of these plates. We've got the dark in there, but no light. Something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this guy up here at the end, and we're to do that, we're going to do some edge highlighting. All right, so what do we need? Well, the first thing I would say we need is I'm going to use just like a number one size brush here. Um, in general, you want a brush that's fairly stable, okay? That is to say you want something that's going to give you good control because you're going to be moving sideways like this across the model. And you're going to be using the lightest touch possible, okay? You do see how I push there and it bends? See how the brush is bending when I push down? We're not pushing that hard, okay? We're doing this. No amount of bend to the brush. So technique-wise, we're talking about the lightest of touches. So first piece of advice with edge highlighting, very, very light touch. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to catch the edges of both of these ridges, okay? And then I want to catch uh, a couple of these plates here to make them really pop. And we're going to get to, we're going to, it's going to be good to do both of these because we have to use two separate techniques. Okay. Um, as well, we'll do the top of the ridge up here as well. So I've put some of the base turquoise that I used for him as well as just some white. Um, I actually used the uh, Vallejo model color white glaze, which I really like this whole series. It's a very interesting paint. Um, it's sort of naturally, uh, it's sort of naturally got a kind of like retardant or, or glaze medium mixed in it, and you can really kind of push it around easily. Um, and in this case, I'm going to use it because it doesn't have a huge amount of coverage, and it lets me work in a thinner paint without necessarily thinning the paint. Um, you don't have to have that. You could use anything you want. Um, so you can see I got some white paint on uh, my fingertip where I didn't want it. No. There we go, on the edge of the brush, about that much, okay? I wiped off the excess on my thumb as usual. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're not gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna start about right here where just beyond where the light is technically starting. You can see how it's faded there. I'm gonna start about right here. And what we're gonna do is with the side of the brush extremely lightly, we're just gonna drag it down. You notice I'm not trying to do it all in one stroke. Just very, very, very light touches, right? So I get something like that. Let's do the other side. We'll do it again. We'll do it in the opposite direction, okay? This also helps clean up my difference between my gold and my blue. So again, about the same place. Nice light touch. We're just dragging the brush ever so lightly. Cross to just leave a little bit of the paint behind. 
key is we don't want to push hard because we don't want the brush to bend. If the brush bends and pushes toward the model, then what's going to happen is we're going to get paint somewhere we don't want it. Okay, so You can see I did that a couple of times. And so now you can see the difference there, right? How much more that pops with the edge placed in there. We can also get like the inside edge. Just so we've got the full little effect. Sorry, I know he's not on camera right there, but I can't reach that point without it. Okay. So there we go, right? Very subtle effect, but it really does make a big difference. So let's take a look. The one on the left without, the one, or my, my left, sorry, uh, the one on the right with, right? This one has it. You can really see when you look at like that side of their their hoods. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing up top here. Now in this case, I'm working at this moment in the pure white, right? Now you don't have to always edge in pure white. Now I went up to a very white color here on this. In general, your edge highlighting should be about one shade lighter than your highlight. Okay, so if you've got a gradient like this, you want to go up about one more shade. Because this was mostly white down at the bottom, my next step up is this very thin white. Um, but you could also, like in this case, I could also just use like a very, um, very, very light turquoise. So here, what we're going to do is the same thing. We want to catch this center ridge. So we're going to make sure we've got our all the excess off, and we're just going to go up very gently. In this case, I'm actually going to go all the way to the top. Okay, so now I've got that line running right down there like that. Again, for comparison, right, you can see the difference of how much more visually interesting just that little trick makes it. Now, because I've, but the only issue is now this white glaze is a little too white up top here. So what we can do is I have just a little bit of the turquoise on my palette. So I thin it way down. I leave. I left the white on there purposely. Okay, so what I get is a color like that. I didn't clean my brush. I left the white there, thinned that out, and then what I'm going to do is in the opposite direction. Just going to kind of meet halfway. All right. So now what I've got is a more smooth transition where the regular turquoise is highlighting the darker part and the white is on the lighter part. You don't really need to go much farther than that. That's pretty much you're good to go. Right? You can do the same thing here if we want to smooth out this transition down here. We can start a little lower than where we started. And we can just take it up. Right Now we could spend a lot of time trying to blend this line perfectly and blah blah blah. And that would all be fine. But we really don't need to. Right? Like it's just, it's just, it's unnecessary. Um, because the reality is, it's it's fine. We're just talking about some quick edge highlighting to get that color difference. Okay. So there we've smoothed out the edge of that line. So now it's not just too stark, and we've carried it up a little bit with the lighter color. Okay. So those are the cases where you can use the side of the brush. That's always your best case for edge highlighting, okay? If you've got, like, the edge of shoulder pads or something like that, like when you want to do the other side here of this hood, right, and you, if you wanted to do the top, you could take, like, some silver and just edge this in the same way, right? Right up the side very gently. These ridges on top of the back, same thing. I could just go like that with, you know, some silver or some very white gold. Right, and good to go. Nice sharp edge highlighting. The trickier part comes when you've got stuff like this. Okay, like his ridges here. Because I can't really get at these, right, in any kind of side way. Alright? So instead, what I'm gonna do is again I'm gonna get just a little of the, the white, thinned it down some. I'm gonna just, I just have like the tiniest amount of the turquoise in here. 
Now, it's important to get all the excess off of the brush. Okay? We don't want any we don't want any we want this to be very very water free. We want the most control. Because here what we're going to do is we're going to very like you see I've locked my hands, right? My arms are locked on the desk, my wrists are locked together. And then what I'm going to do is very gently very lightly just repeatedly drag my brush across the very edge here at the whitest part okay now I'm not having a huge effect when I do this right away that's okay because if you do this too thickly it's gonna look silly real fast and this is the number one thing I see people do. They put the paint down to do this kind of an edge highlight and they just jam the tip of the brush in and try to paint it in a line. Do not, here's the secret, don't try to paint it in one stroke. Just light, repeated touches like this, right? And we're just building that up. And I'm focusing the most pressure for my brush on the highlighted part here where it's quite white from the highlight. This also gives me the most control. If one stroke goes wrong, it's not the end of the world because each stroke is adding very little paint overall to the miniature. And that's what we want. We want a bunch of light feathery strokes to add up to showing that edge. Okay, so we're just very lightly, repetitively touching that edge. So then what we get is a very subtle effect, okay, where you can just see the lighter part. Now, if you want to take it up more, you just keep going. And if you don't feel like, if you're not quite as patient, that's okay. It's all right. You can get a little more paint on and go a little bit faster than I am. You don't have to you don't have to do it this slow. The problem is my base blends here are are based off of like an airbrush which can be a little tricky because if I don't layer on a smooth blend it's going to look very clear. It's going to stand out. Okay? Let's see if I can bring that up just a little more cuz I really want to make sure it's clear on camera. I can see it in reality, but I'm not sure you can see it on camera. get rid of the extra light you'll be able to see it there you go and then the last thing we're going to hit is you see these ridges on the back that's a great thing to hit again with that kind of edge highlight you want to the and so this is the other use of edge highlighting is to take something very bright like white and to use it to counter the darker part of the miniature because this back part here is very dark right that's the darkest part of the ridge so you can use it to sort of set off that edge so uh, here I can use the same trick, oh, a little too much, there we go. I can just lightly touch and create sort of a reflective edge where the light would be catching and it ends that, that piece. So there you go, okay? And we could keep working on that. Now, if you're, if you're not quite so patient, right, you can get a little more. So let's talk about, let's say you don't want to do the light touch, okay? You say to me, Vince, I don't feel like doing dragging my brush across 100 times. This is about hobby cheating. You have lied to me, sir, because you told me this very slow sort of thing. Okay, so what can we do? All right, here's how we're going to do it if we want to go faster, okay? Here's technique number two. Now I have more paint on my brush. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a line nice and solid across here. Now I'm still just touching lightly, but I'm going to make sure I'm actually like leaving the paint in a solid stroke. Okay. As a 
opposed to building up a bunch of slight thin glaze marks. Okay, I'm going to do that where it's much stronger after one time. And if you want it, you could go pretty stark on this. Then what I'm going to do is again, so it's the same trick we did here, just we're going to use it. This is the this is the real key. When you're needing to work like this, like on those inner armor plates on say like a big mech or something where you can't drag your brush sideways, here's your key to smooth that out. After you do your edge, you go back into your base color of whatever's underneath. You thin it way down into that glaze, okay? I still have my white on my brush. I did not thin it, I did not clean the brush. And now I have a very thin, and you can see here, here's the white, right, that we used. There's the turquoise I put over. You can see how thin that is. It's barely showing up, right? Okay, let me get a little more since I literally just wiped it all on my fingertip. Okay. We want it nice and thin. You just want to make sure you're matching your color underneath. And then what you're going to do is in the same way we smoothed out the edge line here on the ridge, we're going to smooth out this line here, both sideways. Okay, like we're going to take it into the, we're going to take this darker color all the way down to make it look like it kind of just eventually fades, which also will then serve to edge highlight the darker part. Okay, but I'm also going to hit the edge of this. What I'm going to do is just slowly feather it out into over the edge of the line that I edge highlighted. I'm not hit covering the whole line. I'm just trying to create a transition between the light edge and up. And you can see how I'm just feathering it slightly along that edge. Very light touch, very thin paint. You don't need a lot of, you don't need to touch it much to get that effect to happen. So you can see there how that now has that light sheen here along the edge of the ridge, okay? And so there you go. Those are your two basic techniques, okay? Um, we'll do it again. The other big place where I see it all the time, shields. Shields like this, right? Where you have the colored shield on top isn't armored. So here, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get some of my white and I'm going to sideways, light touch, right? So light touch from the, from the side. I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna drag it across there at an angle, nice and light. And I'm just trying to hit all of the top of it, right? Now you can see where I've got that line up top pretty clear. And then the key is to really sell this effect. You can see how this has these cuts out of the side. You want to make sure you get every upward facing angle, right? So if you've got multiple things like this, the other key with edge highlighting is your edges that are cut need to move in the same direction, okay? Sometimes when I see people edge highlight, especially with like 40K vehicles, they just edge everything. They just trace around every plate. I don't know, what is that supposed to be? That's not how light works, okay? What you're trying to get with this edge highlighting is light catching on the edge of something before it fades into darkness or, or whatever, okay? You're not just painting it to trace it, okay? So by doing this, where you can see now the top of this is highlighted and the top of this, right? what that does is create that downward image of light hitting this thing, right? Now, if I wanna, again, if I wanted to smooth the sides of it to really sell the effect, same thing. We get some, uh, we get a, a watered down glaze of a lighter turquoise. This is very dark up here, so it's fine. And what do we do? We go down the side. Okay. And we go down the side. Very light touch. And up here, we can do it on the edges, just ever so slightly. Okay, so 
then what you get is a nice smooth transition of the effect. I know that's very hard to see. Let's see if we can zoom there. I know that's very small. I'm going to try. We'll give it a shot. Okay. There you go. So you can see now how we've traced that edge, right? And we've used that bluer color to then set off the angle. If we go back to this guy. All right, let's see if we can get that in focus. I apologize. No, stop doing that. Focus on the front. Uh, da, da. There we go. Okay, you can see now how we've created the lighter effect here and just very subtly along these ridges to counter out the darkness and up here along the top of his head. Okay. So if you wanted to continue, you could get the rest of the plates. I think the key with edge highlighting is don't go overboard. Again, sometimes I see people do like vehicles and stuff. They trace every plate and every edge, and then it just ends up looking like, it looks more like a drawn cartoon then it looks like you're trying to replicate any aspect of like the way light would play on on a on a surface. But if you want to take it up more, you always can, right? It's uh, you can just sort of keep working this. So if I didn't think my let's say I didn't think my my edge highlight went up far enough on this on this guy, like I wanted to take it all the way up, right? We could just kind of keep going up just to clean up my edge. And you can see we just got very light touch, no bend to the brush, just thick, or, or just very quick, thin strokes. Very little pressure, right? That way we get a nice, sharp definition all the way up. So, one more time, so we can see it over here. We're just very light touch very low pressure repeated side repeated simple strokes with the brush all right and there we go and then we don't get the bleed over onto the other edge we get a nice sharp defined line okay so there we go that's our hobby cheating for today, edge highlighting. Uh, I hope that that helps and gets you thinking about what the edges of your miniatures look like and how they interact with the light. But uh, and, and I hope that uh, this technique is useful to you. As always, I appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.